Welcome to Growing Home, the podcast that helps you take care of the place that means the most to you, your home. I'm your host, Terry Therian, alongside your co-host, Len Giddix. So Len, today we met with Jonathan Hudak, the head chef of the Cafe Mantic restaurant in Willimantic, Connecticut. And not only was it interesting to learn about his craft as a professional chef, but his insights on you know what we can use in preparing our family meals this holiday season. Uh, you know, that's right, uh, Terry. He, he looks at it an entirely different way. Of course, he's preparing for 25, 50, 100 people each night. So he he instinctively knows these tips that we are overwhelmed with come a holiday. Yeah, and and even how he thinks about it, it was you know putting the garden to work for us, and it's it's his talent and his creative ability yep. to do that to use the ingredients, quality ingredients. That was something that he brought home, but also his emphasis that the meal was about the people as much as the food, and when you think about it, isn't that the truth? It's 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 the it's the experience of the holiday that we're going to go home with, not that you burnt the bean casserole. And that's what we think about, right? When we're planning our right. holiday get-togethers, it's yeah. it's being around the table with all these people. You know, with the point he brings up, you know, not to sweat the small stuff and to keep it simple and and make it so you can enjoy it as well. Right. There's always a plan B. Right. Always a plan B, and and getting stuff done ahead of time, so you know. Simple and easy for you this holiday. This is going to be an interesting interview. you got, you got to listen to this. Oh, yeah, for sure. So with that, we hope you enjoy our conversation with Jonathan Hudak. So, Jonathan, welcome to the Growing Home Podcast, and thank you for making time to chat with us today. Thank you very much for having me. Today we know you as the chef behind the creations of Willimantic's renowned Cafe Mantic. Can you share with us a bit about your background and what led you to both this profession and also eventually Cafe Mantic? Sure, absolutely. I guess I started off at a pretty young age, um, 10 or 11, uh, interested in cooking. My mom was uh, always working in restaurants and stuff like that, so I would be tagging along, sometimes helping set up uh, tables for dinner and stuff like that, so I kind of grew up around restaurants. She ended up being a manager at one restaurant, and uh, they were short a dishwasher on, I believe it was a Mother's Day. I was about 14 or so at the time, probably broke a few labor laws there, but I was pulled in and recruited, and um, <clears throat> I think one of my favorite things was I wasn't allowed to have soda as a kid, really. She's pretty strict about uh, what I ate and stuff, so at the restaurant, I could have pitchers of soda as long as I was working as a dishwasher. I was I was an employee, not her son, so that kind of uh, was a nice benefit, and um, I kind of, I think, first fell in love with the kitchen culture of just, um, just you know, some crazy people to work with. That was uh, exciting, and um, uh, I just kind of liked the freedom that, that was there, and I ended up transitioning into like a one day a week prep cook for that restaurant. Um, I got paid like five bucks an hour just to help do prep and learn things here or there. And then I kind of just transitioned to a full-time dishwasher through high school and um, at some small restaurants in the area, Italian places and stuff, family owned places. And um, started cooking, worked my way up um, and Eventually ended up at a, at a larger corporate Italian restaurant, doing a few opening uh, restaurants for them and stuff like that, and learned the whole weird corporate side of how restaurants worked. And I I was uh, a very young age as, as a sous chef there, and kind of was very comfortable and thought I knew what I was doing and thought I was really great until someone showed me uh, the French Laundry Cookbook, which kind of changed my life. I I, I tell people it's. Uh, it opened my eyes to what what real fine dining was and and what whole other world there was in in for kitchens and just it was a complete shock to me and I started reading about that and following that up and so you correct me if I'm wrong but French Laundry is the famous restaurant French restaurant in Napa correct Thomas okay. Keller is the chef there mm-hmm. um, and I, I think that that book. It was one of the first American cookbooks that was presented as like a as a European style cookbook with in depth 
you know, stories about purveyors and it had, uh, you know, a feature on the mushroom lady that they used and the uh, lobster fisherman, uh, you know, in Portland, Maine or north of there, you know, showed how deep you could go into ingredient sourcing and, and the stories behind food and stuff like that. And so that really... I think really was a reality uh, check and, a, and an eye opener to uh, how different, you know, the reality of all that was from what I was experiencing in this in this corporate kitchen, and so that kind of made me change directions a bit. Yeah, and then understanding like the hierarchy in the kitchen too for a little bit. So you're working as a sous chef at this time. How does how does a sous chef fit into the operation sure. of the kitchen? So a sous chef basically runs the day-to-day of the kitchen operations and, and supports the, the executive chef, um, uh, basically managing people. It, it's, a, it's a tremendous amount of work and, and responsibility. I was definitely way too young to be in that position, I think, uh, looking back now. Um, uh, they, do all, they do most of the work and, and get very little credit a lot of times. You know, they're, they're, they're running the day-to-day and doing a lot of the hard work. Um, you know, butchering meats, preparing things, uh, you know, watching the other cooks and being the, the teacher, the leader, and uh, pretty much the knower of where everything is and ordering and all that stuff. So so you're a sous chef at a large corporation or a chain restaurant. Right. And then and kind of where did you go from there? From there, I found myself uh, <clears throat> going over to Grant's in West Hartford with Billy Grant. Um, I started there as a line cook. Um and, you know, that was a, a, a huge change in, uh, obviously, to a uh, fine dining restaurant at the time. The menu's, I think, a little different there now. They've gone more kind of uh, American. And at that time, you know, it was really uh, fine dining. And um, uh, I met a incredible amount of people that went on to work at great restaurants there uh, afterwards at, in New York City. And just it really... Billy also introduced me to tons of the local chefs in the area, and I got to do a lot of events with that and really um, met a lot of the, the local restaurant scene and people in there and was, was a part of that. And so is that like a, a restaurant like that everybody is – I mean, they have a pretty big reputation. Was that like sure. some, a restaurant like a lot of cooks and chefs aspire to work for? Or? Oh, I, I think, yeah, it was a different caliber of cooks that, that were there. I was, you know, intimidated at first because it was such a different, a different culture and a different style of food. It really just kind of fed uh, my curiosity and, you know, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of research and into ingredients and, you know, different styles of cuisine. And that time I, I was going out a lot to New York City to eat at top restaurants. I, I racked up, I think, like $19,000 on an Amex card that I'm probably still paying off today <laughs> uh, of just getting the experience of, of, of eating at these great places. And, um, and that was just like personal curiosities oh absolutely yeah it was just just in love with with the whole industry you know and and restaurants in general and just it's it's uh never looked back from there really so you know i read up a little bit about billy grant and one thing that stood out or like part of his credentials almost is that he's he's cooked at the james beard foundation home uh, or house i think three times or, or something like that um but you know for a lot of us outside of the restaurant industry, I mean, maybe you could share with us quickly about the James Beard Foundation and what that means sure. within the industry. So I think, like, so the James Beard Foundation, well, James Beard was a famous American chef, and they have James Beard Awards every year, which is which is pretty much like the Oscars of, of the culinary world. They give out awards for restaurateurs, for chefs, uh, by region overall, uh, best restaurants, cookbooks, all of that stuff. So it's really an industry, um, you know, benchmark. If if someone has won a James Beard Award, uh, it's it's a it's a it's a pretty big deal. It's a it's a very big deal. That's so, awesome. Yeah, and and being invited down to the Beard House in New York City to cook for people is pretty amazing. A lot of a lot of great people have gone through there and done dinners there. Were you working there at the time you'd been invited to cook? No, there? I was not. That was before I was there, and maybe since I left, he's been. I'm not quite sure, but you know, that's that's it's a quite a quite an experience. When you were with Grants, what was your were you a sous chef there as well? Right. So that's kind of the path. So I started off as line cook. 
and became sous chef. And then uh, at the end, I was chef de cuisine, which is basically the person in charge of writing day-to-day menus and stuff like that. You know, Billy, I worked closely with him, and he would have the final say on, on the dishes and stuff like that. But in, in terms of conceptualizing, you know, the You're menu. really the head of the kitchen. Correct, right. Wow. Right. Especially when you get to that point, like uh, if you're a, a chef and you have a chef de cuisine uh, to run a kitchen of yours, it's usually when you have multiple restaurants and you can't manage every single menu you know, by yourself when you have multiple restaurants. So he opened up in Glastonbury, and that was kind of the time where, you know, I, I was and put you doing in the data. Of, right, exactly. Uh, so. His namesake. That's pretty cool. Yep. Great. So then in 2012, you made your way to Cafe Mantic. Right, so that that was a whole new chapter. I started off um, just consulting with my friend Andrew Goot. He uh, had a, a coffee shop, Cafe Mantic at the time was just a coffee shop, and he was looking to expand into a dinner service of some kind. And had a few ideas of what he what he wanted, and you know, I came on board to do some consulting, to do some menu writing, and help him conceptualize the next uh, step for for what dinner would look like there and it turned into me not leaving so uh you know it it, it just kind of worked and I put a lot of time and effort into kind of <clears throat> helping with all that and just couldn't really walk away that easily after you know you put so much effort into something and so. your ideas behind it too right so yeah the original kind of idea was um and still is to this day is is small plates um, sharing plates is kind of what we call it now. Um, and it's the ability to be able to, it's the type of, type of dining style I like to go out to eat. Like even if a restaurant isn't necessarily does small plates or stuff, you usually just order like every appetizer on the menu and it's a way to to taste as much of the food as possible and really get a sense of, of what the restaurant has to offer without being locked into just like one large entree. Uh, so we thought that that would be good. It also it, it's good to people can come in for a, a quick snack, a glass of wine, uh, you know, not spend that much money. So it really puts you in control. Or you can do a very long, almost like a tasting menu of of all the things that we have to offer and really taste everything. So great. So, you know, that actually you know brings me to my next curiosity here. Um, two years after you joined, the New York Times writes an article about the restaurant with the title "Where Small Plates Bear Surprises." Right. So how how's that experience of yeah, getting that was, uh, recognition in such a large <laughs> publication? Right. That was amazing. Uh, that definitely, you know, changed the restaurant for the better and got the name out there. And it was it was, uh, it was a crazy time when that article came out. And, I mean, it was a very, very flattering article. Rand Cooper, he had come in multiple times. We had no idea that he was there. Um, and then I think on his last meal, he came up and said, hey, can I talk to the chef? And I'm like, okay, he was busy. I decided to say hello to him. And he's like, hi, I'm from the New York Times. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I hope we did a good job <laughs> with this guy. But uh, apparently we did on multiple occasions. So that was um, that was really, yeah, that was an amazing article. And I actually didn't read it for a couple of months just because I was just – I don't know. I don't like hearing about myself too much. People write things, and, and everyone's like, oh, it's so really good. They say a lot of nice things. I'm like, I don't want to hear all these nice things about me. <laughs> I don't know. It's just um, – but I, if I finally did read it, and it's, it's amazing. But that's got to be yeah. affirmation that, you know, the project you and Andrew are working on is, is right. really getting its wheels under it and everything. Right, yeah. We were we were nonstop busy after that article for, for quite some time, and it was uh, – it was a whole new level of busy for us, and it was great, which is a great thing. You want people to be able to see what you've been working on. And so did, did the writer, like, tell you how they found out about Cafe Mantic or heard about I don't, your I meals don't know. Um, he, I, I mean, I talked to Rand afterwards, and um, we did a, a film project. I, I was one of the chefs, so they, they did a large film project in Real Art Ways that he kind of was the, was the uh, moderator for. But, you know, he has a certain area that he covers in Connecticut, which they actually just got rid of. They they stopped reviewing Connecticut restaurants. So we're very lucky to get in on that while it was still around. It was just that we were new, and somehow he heard a buzz about it and decided that we were next on the list to, to review. Excellent. Uh, very cool. So now, you know, as a professional chef, we'd love to hear a bit about, you know, the inside perspective you know, on how you think of you know what makes a great meal and, and what the components are, um, sure, or even something like like a dish you you step back and like that was that was a great dish, right? I think I don't know what makes a great meal. 
a lot oh, this doesn't necessarily do with cooking but but good company i think is <laughs> extremely important um and uh i don't know the what what you're in the mood for